All right, looks like we're live. It is Friday, February 5th at 5.02. Um, and I'm going to be picking up where I left off last week. Uh, I've been working on a PRISM.js uh, language definition for CFML. And where we're at now is we need to write some tests. I think I've got the highlighting where I want it, um, but I'm going to need to get the testing in place before I can actually put in a PR. So haven't written these tests before, kind of starting from zero, but I'll be, you know, hopefully able to get this done during the next hour or so. Um, so we're going to start with the PRISM.js docs, and I had gotten them open at least. Um, Alright, so we left off where we needed to add tests. Uh, so the folder is going to be in tests, languages, and then the language name. So let's hop over to our code. And now we zoomed in enough here. Let's see, we can give it one more. It's probably a little better. Right, you can read that. Alright, tests, languages, and we'll make a new folder in here, and we will call it CF script because um, that's what we are working on right now. Oops. And then, what are we going to do next? Okay, tests for every major feature of the language. Um, and then I think I read somewhere um, that, okay, so there's actual docs on the testing here. I think this has a bit more information. Um, there was a notes on naming the test files. Okay, it looks like is my stream a little wonky. Um, we'll see here. My internet has been all over the place. Um, so let's just see. Got some poor stream health. Um, and we're back. Okay, sorry about that. Um, our internet's been all over the place. If it gets wonky again, maybe I'll switch over and <laughs> stream from my phone. All right, we are. We got our language. All right, so we need to figure out. You know what we're gonna do? Okay, language names must match the name. We're gonna test it in isolation. Um, test. It. We're not testing injection. We need a test case. All right. I don't know if this is big enough either. There we go. A little bigger. We're going to make our test case file. All right, so here I did see these notes. Um, so for a naming convention, um, we're going to go with feature name underscore feature. So their example is like string interpolation feature dot test. So we'll grab that. I'm not going to do that same name. Um, you know, we're going to do, well, first we're going to look at, they, they gave the, um, she gave the JavaScript tests as a good starting point. So you know what? Boolean. Boolean's a great place to start. We'll do boolean feature.test and we'll actually, I wonder if I can just copy it. Can I copy that file and drop it into CF scripts? CF script. I can. Okay. There we go. Checks for booleans. Um, that looks good to me. Um, Let's hop back down to the terminal. We should, I think we should actually be able to run that now. Um, so I'm going to hop over here and I'm going to do what npm run start so that I have the little local server running. Um, and this way we can actually uh, test, uh, we can use the test thing to make sure that we're capturing tokens correctly. So we'll put that up there. We'll zoom in and hop over. Where's the testing thing? I think it's down at the bottom. Uh, so many languages, test drive. All right, so here, this is where we're gonna test. Um, oh, CFML, why is CFML not there? Oh, there it is, CFML script, got it. Okay, so we're able to test our highlighting here and make sure that the tokens are being captured correctly. So that's all good. Um, and then running our tests, I believe, where's our, where's our example for running our tests? npm run test colon languages and then the language, all right. So we'll just specify the one language here and we'll see if that Boolean test that we added uh, got picked up correctly. 
All right. npm run test languages language equals equals cf script and it did not run correctly. Fail. All right, what did we break? Uh, testing language CF script should pass to test case boolean feature zero pass. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, so that failed. Why in the world would that have failed? Oh, maybe because I don't have them as booleans. I think I have them as types. So that actually makes sense. Um, right? I don't have them. Let's uh, let's check our actual file here, and we have. I think we have true and false. Where do we have true and false? True. True, true. Uh, unless we're inheriting that from, uh, I think we're inheriting that from C like, which is another language definition that's in there. Um, we're down to, oh yeah, it's five, so it's not from there, so okay. Uh, C like, because we're inheriting from that, and this is Boolean and true and false. So let me look at what the JavaScript one is doing. Prism JavaScript. Um, see if it has its own. Boolean, it doesn't. It's extending C like. So, okay, that's weird. Let's hop over to the test drive and let's just put true in here and show tokens. Yeah, it's capturing it. Let's inspect it. And it's token Boolean. Okay. Confused. Confused I am. All right, um, don't need the JavaScript one right now. Let's hop back to our Boolean feature test. We have true and we have false. And we expect Boolean true and Boolean false. Checks for Booleans. Hmm. All tokens in the readf object that do not overwrite tokens of the extended language have to be placed after the last token that does overwrite the exist. Okay, there's an error note here. All tokens in the readf object that do not overwrite tokens of the extended language have to to be placed after the last token that does overwrite an existing token. Move the token's type after the operator token. Oh, okay, well, that's a super helpful error message. <laughs> All right, so let's hop back over to our language definition. And they're saying move type to after operator. And I just want to get a little more clarity on why. Um, if you don't overwrite tokens of the extended language, they have to be placed after the last token that does overwrite an existing token. Okay, so it probably has to do with how these are merged. Um, so, we're going all over the place here. Alright, so, move type after operator. I can do that. I can move type after operator. Hopefully that doesn't mess up anything else we have going on, but I don't think it will. Famous last words. So first let's see if that changes our test. Nope. New error. Um, tokens keyword comment string should be in the order comment string keyword. Tokens that overwrite existing tokens of the extended language should be in the... Oh, okay, so we need to match the order. I mean, honestly, these are the most helpful error messages I have ever seen explicitly telling me how to fix my code, so that's absolutely delightful. Um, keyword comment and string should be in the order comment string keyword. So we need comment... Oops, messed up comment there. Comment's a little bit longer. Show comment.
followed by string and then keyword. Comment strips. Yeah. String keyword. Cool. Alright, let's try this for the third time. You know what they say about the third time? It's the charm. Passing. Clear. Okay. I'm going to add those changes to the component. Components, prison. Oops. Uh, re order. I need to commit it. I have to clean this up before I put it in the PR, but we're going to say reorder. How are these described? Come on. Oh, frozen here? Can't scroll? Whatever. All right. Reorder tokens. Let's so strange. I haven't had this happen in VS Code before. I've lost my scroll in the terminal. Alright. You commit reorder. This is for my own because I'm listening to get squashed anyways. Reorder tokens to match uh, C uh, language extension. Order. Sure. Okay, so we just have boolean in there, and now that should be uh, addressed for other ones. Um, all right, so let's go back and look at JavaScript again. And we don't actually need the sidebar there. We can just jump right back into... Now we do need the sidebar because we need to actually see what the existing JavaScript tests are. All right, JavaScript tests. We've got class method, constant function. So let's grab the function test keyword, number, I don't know if we want all those numbers, operators, is there a keyword? Yeah, we did keyword, so we just did key, we got grabbed, let's, let's grab these and we'll actually just copy them and paste them up there. Keyword, number, operator, um, we'll do those for now. Keyword, number, operator, into CF script, and we'll paste them. Are you going to go in there for me? Hmm. Take two. Take three. We're going to grab keyword, number, and operator. We are going to copy them and we are going to paste them. There we go. Alright. Close, 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 close. And we'll open the um, CF script slash keyword. All right, so we're going to need to get our own keywords here. So we'll split this and we'll grab our CF script keywords, which have been moved. And we're going to grab all these and stick them in. And then, OK, they do this a couple ways. First, we'll do this way. First, we'll do them all in order. Oops, <laughs> don't want to delete them. That wouldn't help. Um, paste. Grab these. Copy, 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 copy. Backspace. Semicolon down. Escape. Alright, well, XML. Alright, we have try catch finally, try catch e finally. We do not have async functions, um, so we don't need those. Um, actually, we don't really want that either. I don't think we have anything going on actually contextually for. Do I have try and catch in here? That might be something else I need to add. Try oh, try is in our keywords, and so is catch, and so. Finally is not in here. We have a finally, right? I think we need to add that. May have forgotten it. Let's hop over to CF Docs. I believe I need to let me just make sure that I don't have it in here somewhere else. I do not. Okay. Yay for testing. You miss catch things you would have missed. 
So I'll hop back to Chrome, we'll go to CF Docs. And I believe, yeah, we do have a, we have a finally, try catch finally. So I'm gonna need to add that as a keyword, keep our alphabetical order. So we'll stick it before. And I'm just gonna commit that. Get add, commit, add, finally keyword. That is not keyword, but that's fine. All right. Um, I'm not sure what we are doing with these, so we're actually just gonna kill those. I don't think we even, oh, we'll get finally, and we'll stick it up here, D, D, E, oops, E, F, and right now, I'm not gonna, I don't have to mirror JavaScript here, I'm just gonna do these um, the way that I have them. Okay, um, and then I wanna look, I wanna actually look at, uh, so I know JavaScript's testing suite there is fairly extensive. Um, I want to see. Oh my goodness, so many languages. Uh, like what Java has, because a lot of ways we are um, similar to Java. Java. All right. Java. What does the Java keyword feature look like? List them. A bunch of the same. Yeah, okay, so that's just pretty straightforward. Ours would be more along those lines. I wonder why, I wonder why this has, I don't think we're looking, you know what? Hmm. I don't think we need the, I'm not gonna keep these semicolons after them unless I know why they're there and I don't think we need them there. So I'm gonna remove them. Cool, got our keywords. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna delete this because this is just completely different. It's based on the JavaScript, um, the JavaScript expected token stream. So I'm gonna remove that, save it, and then I'm gonna hop back to running the test suite. Now I think it's said in here that we could have the test runner actually create that stream um, by running it with uh, dash dash accept. Um, so we'll hop back and we'll try that. And that should it should populate that. So we'll hop down here. Uh, we're gonna run our tests for CF script and then we're gonna do what was it dash dash accept dash dash accept got a failure why did we get a failure okay oh <laughs> because I you know this is this is what happens when you try to do um, try to do more than one thing at a time uh, all right let's go to oops. I left those. Um, oops. I left the uh, other um, tests in here, and obviously didn't. Um, I didn't implement a number test or an operator test, so of course they would fail, and that messes up my testing of the keyword feature. So lesson learned: do one thing at a time. Um, all right, moving those to trash. We will clear clear this out, and we'll try running it again with that accept, and we'll see what happens. Okay, wonderful. They're passing. Let's close that, and now um, let's look at our CF script keyword feature. So now, okay, by doing that, we got this keyword stream here that matches break catch component continue package everything down to XML just the way that we wanted it to. And this checks for all keywords. So Boolean and feature are in good shape. And lesson learned, we'll do these one at a time. We'll hop back down to JavaScript. 
and we will so we're gonna look at JavaScript's number feature and then I'm also gonna look at Java's CS script paste in number feature and I'm just gonna rename this underscore JS so that I can paste in the Java one um, just to see how different they are because um, I imagine that they are a bit different so we'll split here in two we'll put the the JavaScript one. Um, <laughs> what's crazy here, I mean, this is just my own, uh, like, I don't know if I want it to recognize all of these as numbers. I would expect in this case, so this isn't, this is a number, this is a number that we expect to be a number. That seems insane. Try cf.com um, and let's do write output. Actually, I could probably just do this in the terminal. Um, is valid uh, number? Now I have to go back to CF Docs. I could just do is numeric, right? Is numeric whether it can be converted to a number is numeric I mean, I'm going to paste it in as a string I guess and let's just run that so yeah Lucy's given me a no on that being numeric and if I do it this way yeah oops extra no that was right yeah it's just not why would this be I'm just curious here java number a lot of b's and nonsense um well we certainly don't want that one um what about this well maybe it's not okay oh what am i thinking this is a lexer not uh not whether the number thinks it's a it's a valid number okay So would we want the lexer to think that these are valid numbers? I mean, most of these... Oh, or maybe it's... No, it's grabbing that. It's classing all those as things that should be identified as numbers. Huh. That's so weird to me. All right, let's... We're going to have to dig into this. Unfortunately... A little more here we're back on prism and I think prism has oh yeah, we don't have the test ones let's just go to prism JS jump back in I think there are we got, we have more examples here more examples so let's let's look at the JavaScript and Java examples. Operators, indented code, regex with slashes, lots of regex stuff, nested strings, strings with slashes. Yes, six features, Java. So the numbers that it's showing here are a bit more normal. I mean, although I don't know why. I mean, this is my lack of number theory or something, but like. Is I don't, I don't think yeah that's not a number. <laughs> I don't know in what context I would want that to be a number. What are these? Yeah, that's so. Like, what what is that? Hexadecimal. All right, 175 hex to decimal. All right, so I guess, yeah, I don't, I don't think I would want CF to think that that was a number. <laughs> um, let's, let's look at what else we have in here. I mean, 42D, 42, like none of those. 
I don't even, like, I don't even think that can be a number. Hmm. Let's just look at somehow some other numbers. Let me look at my number lexer. I don't even, rather than just looking at other numbers, let's look at what we have in our actual CF script parser here. Do we have one for number, or we're just inheriting it? I think we're just inheriting it from C like. So we will look at the C like one. And the number is a, a lot more complicated than ours. Ugh. Should I overwrite it to make it simpler? Maybe. Um, we'll go to the C like tests. I mean, obviously, it would basically be the same because we're just uh, we're just inheriting it. So the so boolean, yeah, boolean would match. Oh, that's actually better. You know what? I think I want our boolean test to look like the C like one. We'll put those in, and it'll get the punctuation too. Um, all right, boolean. Let's, where's our boolean one? Boolean feature test CF script. We're gonna update it because I like that more. Um, now the C like number feature is a bit simpler. Again, I don't think you can do this in Cold Fusion, um, right? I mean, it's not going to be. Oh no, you can't. Interesting. T I L. You can do that. Okay. Um, hmm. Wow. What, it, what number does it think it is? Okay. I guess that's good to know. Well, we can keep that one in there. I'm assuming that we can do... Can we do this then? No. All right. Well, what if we said test equals that? And then we'll say is is if it's is it numeric? Yes. So we can do that. Um, but I think this is probably doing 2.1e. This is a little bit above my pay grade, but I guess this I mean this is being highlighted as a number. So if if TriCF is highlighting it as a number, I am perfectly happy doing the same. Um, Let's try that. I think the hexadecimal stuff um, is a bit outside of what we're actually able to do in Cold Fusion. Yeah, that's not, just not like that. That way, it's not. And if we, uh, what did we do? We capitalized babe in the other example. Um, yeah, those are not... I mean, they're being... Okay. Hmm. Interesting examples there. And, you know, a whole aspect of the language and parsing that uh, I just don't expect. I mean, I think we just want some, some really simple stuff. I'm wondering... Okay, so let's just look. I gotta look at everybody's blah blah blah. Everything's a slog. Boolean, comment, keyword. So closure doesn't even have a number parser. Um, what else do we want to check here? Let's just look at like maybe I don't know Python or Ruby, PHP. What they have for their number? Python, Ruby, PHP. Oh, go to the P's. PHP. PHP number feature has some of these crazy things. I just don't. <laughs> this is this is stuff that I've just never. If someone could tell me what these are, I would appreciate it. Never seen something. Yeah, that's not not a thing for us. Wouldn't expect it to be. Well, it's, at least my intuition is right there, right? So that is the PHP number feature, Perl's number feature, also has these hexadecimal things. Maybe 
Let's just look and see if docs what they have regarding um, hexadecimal stuff. If there's anything built in with that. Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing with hex. All right. Moving right along, let's jump back and look at Python. I mean, Python does more with numbers, so there's just probably. Oh, that's a bit closer to what I expect. These these are the ones that surprise me, though. 42J? What is, why is 42J getting highlighted as a number? Um, Ruby. Ruby number does not have one. Um, I mean, I kind of think maybe we don't need one since we're inheriting we're inheriting it from C like. Um, and since we're just extending that, I don't think it necessarily makes sense to uh, write tests for it. It probably only makes sense to write tests for the stuff that uh, we're doing differently than the language that we're extending, which kind of means that the tests that I've written there aren't necessarily uh, worth keeping. Um, so let's jump back. Let's jump back to our actual parser here. So comment is one that we're not doing the same thing as C like string well keyword obviously. So the keyword one is worth having. I'm going to keep the boolean one, but I don't think we need to do number because um, number uh, number we're just inheriting from C-like. So I'm going to run down to my tests. I'm going to do this with a little bit more focus than I had previously. Number feature, delete. We're not implementing our own, so uh, I don't think we need this. Um, but we have keyword. Um, so what's another easy one? operator because we have our own operator lists so let's look at the a lot of scrolling during this live stream um, okay let's go to Java let's see what Java has for the operator feature I think that's kind of the approach that we want to take um, so we'll grab operator feature and we will run up to CF script and we'll drop that operator feature in there and again we will split the screen go into open up CF script and look at our operator list and move move them over to match um, so we have yes all of these plus 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 uh, minus, 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 plus equals, minus equals, yes. Captured those there. We have um, and, 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 and do we have and, and equals. I think we have all of those in, in here, although maybe not. Oh, yeah, I think we have the and equals getting captured there. Um, we have um, not, we have not equal, um, you know what I kind of need to do here. Um, we do not have these, we don't have the triples. Um, so I'm going to get rid of those. Triple, no to the triple. Um, no to that. No to this. Um, we do have. All right, so you know, if I should have written my test as I was going, it would have been a lot better because <laughs> I I put together that list very carefully and I remembered everything that I had in it. Um, I kind of wanna uh, change my font while I'm working on this. Um, because my font merges these things, and when you're uh, so we'll go to settings, 
font and we will just um, get rid of tank mono for now and then hop back to the operator feature and now that's a little easier to parse um, because it's not merging like the arrows uh, the way that it was before okay um, we've got or or I don't think we can do that um, Did I keep the squiggle? I don't remember if I kept the squiggle. I think I did. Did I? No, I did not. We have no squiggle. Um, the carrot we do have. We have the not equals. Any of those. Um, the multiplying equals the dividing. The mod. Um, don't think we have this arrow or these double guys. Um, Okay, so this is not going to be, we have more than that, and I actually have to, I'm going to have to go back through my regex again to uh, grab everything that we need, but I just want to make sure, I want to see if what we have right now uh, works, so we'll save that, we'll hop back in here, and we'll run it with accept, it passes, and then we will run it without accept, passing nice okay so we know at least that we're getting looks like our operators are let's make this bigger um, you know what we'll do we'll split this in two and then we'll load the operators alongside so we captured plus 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 equals minus 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 equals um, every one of these is looking good um, okay, where are we? Exclamation, exclamation equals carrot. Capturing a carrot. Alright, so that's actually not right. We just captured the carrot multiple times. Can we do this in CF? I don't remember. What would it be? No, definitely can't do that. That's not one of our operators. Um, I mean, I'd expect it to capture like that. But we have greater than, or less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, equal, double equal, and, 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 and equals. Okay. So, we definitely, that was, that piece was wrong. Um, okay. Let's close that result. Let's run it with accept again. Um, and then let's take a look at what we got back. Um, exclamation, plus plus, plus equals, minus, 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 minus equals. Exclamation, not equal to, less than. We're getting two, it's not interesting, it's not capturing, this is actually probably a prob, oh. Hmm. Oh, I didn't save it. <laughs> that's why it didn't work. Um, okay, broken. That's fine. What did we miss here? Oh, <laughs> needed to clean out the middle before I ran that, I believe. All right, so be gone. Run it with accept. Works. And then again, we'll take a look to make sure that it's actually parsing it the way that we want it to. Nice. All right, we're good to hear. Now we have greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, um, equal, strict equality, all those matches, or, uh, double or, capturing question mark and the colon. We can actually get them together to, um, then we should probably have one here that has question mark dot and question mark colon Elvis Elvis and the null coalescing operator those star star equals bar bar equals all right so that looks pretty good so far um, I just got to make sure 
Oops. I'm going to take a look now back at our at our regex here um, <laughs> and see if I can remake uh, heads or tails of what we were. Here we go, operators. So we have plus plus or minus minus or the double ampersands. Um, we have uh, that's is that capturing? Oh, that's capturing double or. Um, we also have so I'll put this down at the bottom. We have we can do arrow functions now. So arrow function is here. Or um, this is a character set. So we have oh, ex well, oh so we do have the triple equality or the not triple equality. Um, so one two. One, two, three, um, and then also, let's put those on new lines. Oh, do we have not, we don't have not equals, double equals. Um, oh, not equals is, is, is up higher. Not equals, so triple equality or not triple equality is apparently something we can do. Um, so that's what's going on in here, either of those followed by that. Then we have, um, you know, I toss this in G Skinner if it's up so that I can uh, parse it more easily. Red Jaxer, please be running. I think it's down again. All right, online regex. Insert my regular, regular, my regular, regular expression. Um, yeah, so my texture keeps being down, and that's frustrating. Um, what, what part was I looking at here? I was looking at, we did this, any of these, and that. And okay, so this is between zero, quantifier matches between zero and one of which before, oh, so that's greater than or greater than or equal to, less than or less than or equal to. Then we have a set here with plus minus star, okay. Basically any of these can be followed by an equal sign. So let's hop back into the code where it's actually easier to read that. Um, all right, we can have plus equals, minus equals, we can have star equals, we can have divided equals, we can have mod equals, we can have and equals. So we're up to here, because we already did, we already did less than or greater than, yeah. Um, we can have, okay, so the, then we have an or in here. Why do we have, an, an, we can't have or equals, can we? I don't think that's a thing. Um, let's see, exponent equals, not equals, we have that. Um, double equality, and then that actually, and this also gives us greater than or less than. I think we're a little redundant with them. These and that, I'm not sure though. And since I'm not sure, I'm not going to change it. Um, okay, so all that stuff is in there. Then we have, we can do question mark, dot, or colon. And then finally in here we can do, or question mark, just straight up question mark, colon. Okay, I think, I think this list captures everything that we want. Um, so, those are operators, yeah, so that's zeroed out, and we'll hop back in and we'll run it with accept, passes, we will run it without accept, unsurprisingly, it passes, and then we'll just look in here, um, we'll move this over, 
and we'll do what we're supposed to do, making sure that the operators that it output match what we put in. So we got plus, 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 plus equals, minus, 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 minus equals, not, not equal to, less than, less than or equal to, greater, greater than or equal to, equals, strict equality, all those matches, the various types of and equals, ors, um, we've got question mark, colon, two ways you can put them together, carrots, stars, division, mods, and I don't know if we actually want the, uh, I'm not sure if we want the arrow function in here. It's not, it's more of a fun, you know, we're going to, it's not an operator. No, it shouldn't be in there. We're going to kill that. If the operate, that's, that's a function. That's not an operation. So we'll kill that last one. Remove it. Just run our test again to confirm that move worked. And nice, our operators are working as expected. So we have done, we have not done comments yet, we have not done strings yet, but we did do keywords, we did operators. Oh, operators continues. We did not finish operators because we have all of Cold Fusion's possible um, text-based operators. So we're going to clear out our token stream. Goodbye, token stream. I'm going to be completely honest. Writing tests is taking longer than I wanted it to. <laughs> we have all these. Oops, didn't get them all. All these operators. I'm going to put them in here. And we'll give them some new lines. And then we will rerun this with accept. And then we will rerun it without accept. Obviously, it'll work. Um, and then once again, just to make sure that um, our output matches our input. Well, we really only need to check the second half here. We know that we have and contains equals everything down. Nice. Now operators are good. All right, so let's look back at our language. Operators are done, now we have types. Um, so we're going to make our own file here. Open up the side. We're going to go to CF script. And we'll make a new file in here called type feature. And the type feature is going to be kind of similar to the keyword feature, type feature. Clear out the middle, because it's going to have a different stream. Oh my goodness, OK. Mice are silly. Let's just do this with the keyboard. And if you start hearing the banging, it's because my children are having a good time. All right, so our type, let's move this over, close the side, grab our types. This is pretty straightforward. It's going to be very similar to the way we did the keyword one, which is nice. I like simple. I'm not going to complain about that. Simple is good. All right, save. We'll run it with accept. Obviously, it'll run fine without accept because it just made its own stream. And we'll take a look at the um, stream it generated. Any to up to XML. All those ran fine. So that's good. Our feature test is good. All right. I'm just trying to look at easy ones I can knock out right now. I'm obviously not going to finish all of the tests um, during this live stream, but we did types. Um, we did operators, we did keywords, we did not do strings, and we did not do comments, we'll have to do those. And then, so what did we do? Oh, these are scopes. And we need, we just put, okay, so actually scopes, scopes is also going to be, scopes is going to be pretty easy. Um, 
type feature, we're going to duplicate this and we're going to call this scope feature. Our scope feature is going to highlight any of the available scopes. Cruising through our tests now. Alright, we got our scopes. I'm going to clear out our existing token stream. This pattern. Oh, I'm going to have to redo the uh, descriptions because they're wrong now. <laughs> Copying and pasting. Alright, run it with accept. It's good. Look at our stream app through variables. Everything worked fine. Um, checks for all scopes. Scope feature's good. Type feature. Checks for all types. That one's good. This one checks for all operators. Okay, so within this, our scope checking works. Now we have function variable. Um, and we can probably, for the function variable, um, that's one that we basically took from JavaScript. So we should be able to um, look at their, I'm assuming they have a function variable. They have a function variable feature test. So we will copy that. And we will paste it into here. Because we're basically doing, oh my goodness. <laughs> Some crazy stuff in here. Um, what we do, so um, I was debating whether I deal with this. All right, 51 minutes. Maybe I will. Um, I need to rework. All right, well, you know, what, let's, just, let's just run this. Okay, that broke. Why did it break? A couple things got captured as punctuation that shouldn't have. In in our, um, well, probably because of async. Is it because of async? It's probably because of async. Um, I wonder if we take those out, if it'll work. Um, ah, well, it's actually, okay. So that's that's the reason why we're going to remove their stream here. All right, let's see what else we have going on here. We're going to clear these out. I need to rework the function variable one to not look for async functions since cold fusion doesn't support that. So I'm going to remove this as well. Anything that says async in here, I will remove. Um, that looks that looks right. Um, okay. We'll save that. Um, I need to hop over to Prism CF script. Um, and in our function variable here, we're going to grab this regex out of it. And let's just try to refine this ever so slightly without breaking it. Um, we're going to try regexer again. Please be back up. It's the nicest interface for doing at least my opinion, doing regex online. Um, but it's it's been like really frequently down, which is you know, not not helpful. Come on. Well while that spins out and doesn't load, I will put this in here. So why don't we have this leading matches a pound sign literal uh, and that could be zero or one. I don't think we want that, actually. I think I can remove that, and that'll make ours different. So we're going to remove those, because that's not the really CFs. Um, and then we have this async within a non-capturing group. Oh, I can probably just kill. Nice. I think I can just kill, and then 0 or 1. 
So we're going to remove that non-capturing group. And then the rest, I think, I think the rest should be fine. So we will, uh, pattern error, what, uh, where's our pattern error? What is it not like, what's the error? This token is not supported in the selected flavor. Um, okay, I'm going to copy this because I think this is okay. I'm going to stick this back in, let's just stick it on an extra page. I'm going to just make sure that it was saying that same thing from the very beginning. But there was a pattern error? It was. Okay. So, don't need you. And we will go back. Um, we'll go to that. This. Kill it. Paste this in here. So that is a more CF flavored function variable search. Um, what I want to do is grab, I just want to make sure that my, uh, my example code. Um, all right, Rajak, sir, you've made me sad today. Um, okay, let's refresh this. And let's just make sure that what we're capturing here looks right. So, looks, this looks pretty good to me. We got foo as a function variable, so that's getting captured correctly. Um, yeah, I, I like how that looks. All right, so let's, this will be the last, the last thing that we do here. What time is it? 59, okay. Um, that looks good. Let's go clear. Um, I really didn't need two columns here. Let's just see what we did in components. Oh, I don't want to see what I did in components. I just want to see what I did to the, um, I want to see what I did to uh, components slash CF script. Yes. What did I do in here? It was just the change to the function variable. I did do that. So we'll commit that and we'll say updated syntax to remove a sync matching. So I know why I did that. Uh, push that up. Um, okay. Prison CF script is good. Hop back in here, clear it out, run it with accept. And now let's look at our, uh, let's look at the match that we got for this. Uh, we have our function variables set up here. Oh. This one's kind of wacky. Uh, this has does it have destructuring in it. We might want to remove that one. All right, but let's just see if the output stream here matches what we wanted. Um, foo is a function variable. Equals is an operator. Function is a keyword. Punctuation, open and close. Punctuation, open and close. That looks good. Uh, foo is a function variable. Um, operator, keyword. Uh, nothing for X and the space, punctuation for the comma, closing it, that looks good. Um, and this one, let's go, op we've got punctuation, function variables, foo, op yeah, all, that looks, punctuation, 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 yes, that one looks good. Foo bar is a function variable. I don't think we can do it this way, <laughs> but I mean, that is how I'd expect to capture it. Foobar equals function, an arrow function there. Okay, so let's look at that one. Um, Foobar is the function variable. Well, operator, punctuation x, punctuation y. Um, oh, it's capturing? Interesting. In these cases, it's capturing the arrow function um, as an operator. I don't know if I want it to or not. You know, I'm going to have to I'll make a note. Oh, I'll make a mental note. 
uh, to see if that's how I want those arrow functions actually captured. Um, and then what do we have getting output here at the end? X, R, N. Um, huh. Not sure what's going on with that. That's weird. I'll have to look into that too. So this one seems a little bit. The foobar one here seems a little bit off. I don't know why I have these trailing line break like things. Because that one doesn't look any different than the others. Um, okay. Well, you know what? It's pretty close. Um, but I've been going for an hour, so I'm going to wrap this up. I have a little bit more testing to do, and I probably have some examples I have to put together, but certainly one week closer to, uh, to getting this all done. Uh, bottom line, <laughs> testing is important, uh, but it is also certainly work. Um, but thanks for tagging along. Have a great weekend, and I will see you all next week.